Our next 2024 conference preview takes us to the CUSA. That's right, Conference USA. And this conference is adding new members every single year, it seems. This year, they welcome the Kennesaw State Owls, and next season will be Delaware, but we're not worried about the Blue Hens right now. Uh, Conference USA has seven of ten teams that are rated from number 114 to number 134. But there's three schools that prop it up just a little bit. And, of course, Liberty towers above the rest from a coaching and resources standpoint. Uh, Now, before we get into it, you guys know what to do. Like the video, of course, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe to the podcast. Because I also do shows on that pod that you're not going to get on YouTube. And, of course, tell me in the comments your thoughts on all of these different teams. Who you think is going to win, CUSA, etc. Now, if you want to keep up with my bonus content during the season my stats, projections, uh, picks as I make them, bonus podcasts, etc. Sign up at bettingcfb.com. It's 5 bucks a month or 50 bucks for the year. Uh, Now, for each of these conference previews, I'm giving you three reasons why each team might go over, three of why they might go under, and I'm going to give you the number of projected wins from my numbers. So, let's go ahead and dive in. We'll start with the Florida International Panthers. Current win total sits at four and a half. That's same as the opener. The odds are plus 140 to go over. That is 41.67% implied probability. And minus 170 to go under. That is implied probability of 62.96%. Conference odds are plus 10,000. That's 101 with an implied probability of 0.99%. So not great. Uh, Reasons why Florida International might go over their win total Mike McIntyre has a history of turning programs around by his third or fourth year. He's already shown signs of that at FIU. He's got back-to-back four and eight seasons after just a dismal stretch for that program. Uh, I think everybody remembers exactly what uh, Butch Davis was saying about it, how they don't invest in the program, et cetera. Mike McIntyre came in and turned it around. They are winning some games that they are not supposed to be able to win yet, and they might do the same this year. Uh, Number two, the Panthers – Bring back six offensive linemen with starting experience. And, of course, they've got a promising young quarterback, Keon Jenkins, who uh, really showed flashes of potential late in the season. And then number three, you've got a high ranking in returning production. It's second in Conference USA. And they've got nine games that are projected to be within one score. Uh, eh, seven games projected to be within one score. Uh, they've got the pieces and the opportunities to turn close losses into wins. Now... As far as why FIU might not go over the win total, number one, despite some signs of progress, FIU is still ranked in the 120s, or rated in the 120s, um, but ranked in the 120s in SP Plus last season. They relied heavily on uh, on winning close games, which is not a sustainable strategy, but they did get some wins out of it. So, Uh, Number two, the team lost several key players that include star uh, receiver Chris Mitchell to Notre Dame and, of course, top linemen and defenders to several different P4 programs, which is going to be difficult to replace. Uh, Number three, the new coordinators, while they are experienced, they have not had recent success, and the roster still has some pretty significant gaps, particularly on defense, which was not good last year, to put it bluntly, of course. Uh, Their rating is 129 nationally. Conference rating is number nine. And uh, their projected wins are 4.64, which is slightly over this total here. Uh, You've got three games as projected favorites and seven toss-up games. We'll see what FIU does this year. The Jacksonville State Gamecocks. Their current win total sits at eight. Uh, This thing opened at seven and a half. They've got odds of minus 110 to go over. The implied probability yeah, probability there is 52.38%. And minus 120 to go under, implied probability is 54.55%. So slightly favored to go under that eight. Uh, conference odds are plus 500. That is a uh, probability of 16.67%. Uh, and the reason it's not a little bit higher is because, of course, Liberty is in this conference. Uh, now, as far as why Jack State might go over their win total, number one, Rich Rodriguez. He's got a proven track record of turning programs around just like Mike McIntyre. In just two years, he led Jacksonville State to a successful first year in FBS. They won nine games and a bowl game last year, which is remarkable. It, it shades of James Madison kind of stuff. Uh, number two, the offense is reloading. Of course, you got intriguing transfers like uh, Tyler Huff from Furman. you got uh, UConn's uh, former quarterback, Zion Turner, uh, who looks like he will fit in Rich Rod's offense perfectly. And they retain their all-conference guard, Clay Webb, which is likely going to keep their powerful run game uh, pretty effective. 
Uh, number three, of course, despite losing some key defensive players, the addition of experienced transfers and the hiring of Luke Olson as the new defensive coordinator uh, with his aggressive 3-3-5 scheme, that can maintain a pretty solid defensive performance. Now, as for why Jacksonville State might go under, the team is only bringing back nine starters. They lose key players like Zion Webb, uh, star defensive end Chris Hardy. Uh, those guys are going to be really difficult to overcome losing. Uh, number two, the defense, which was a strength last year, we brought up that it could be a good thing. Well, they're seeing a lot of turnover. That includes the departure of their defense coordinator and several top defenders that are uh, transferring out to P4 schools. Number three, you've got a challenging schedule, right? It includes road games at Louisville, Liberty, and Western Kentucky. The Gamecocks might struggle to replicate their previous success against tougher competition. And remember, they had a couple of games where they had to come back late uh, last season just to get to that win. Uh, eight, eight wins is pretty high here. Uh, their national rating, I've got it number 86. Conference rating is number two. Projected wins, I've got them at 7.09. So that is under the eight and under the seven and a half where it opened. Uh, I've got them as a projected favorite in nine games, but I've got five toss-up games that are that are all expected to be one-score games. This one, uh, this could be a very tricky kind of season for uh, Rich Rod and the Gamecocks. The Kennesaw State Owls. That's right, brand new to FBS this year. They're making the move up uh, from the FCS up to Conference USA. Their current win total sits at 2.5. That is the same as the opener. Of course, odds of minus 110 to go over. That's 52.38% implied probability. And minus 120 to go under. That is the slight favorite at 54.55%. And of course, because they're transitioning from FCS to FBS, if I remember correctly, if my memory serves right, uh, they're not eligible to win the conference title this year. Now, I might be wrong about that, but we'll we'll see. Uh, as far as why Kennesaw State might go over their win total, number one, head coach Brian Bohannon's got a pretty strong track record. He led Kennesaw State to four seasons with at least 11 wins in their first five years. And, uh, you know, crafting a unique, effective option-based offense that can control the game tempo is it's what he does. So uh, maybe that's what he will continue to do here. Uh, number two, of course, the team returns 15 starters. That includes key playmakers like running back Michael Benefield and receiver Gabriel Binyard, uh, who have shown significant potential to create big plays. And then, of course, number three, a recruiting hotbed in the Atlanta area and some solid transfers. The Owls have got a, a decent foundation to build on and should be pretty competitive in some winnable games against teams like UT Martin, Sam Houston State, and uh, Florida Atlantic here. All of those uh, within a touchdown, UT Martin, they they should beat, should beat. Uh, and if you see my projected score on there, uh, my FCS schools have all got a very similar rating compared to FBS schools. So that's why that number is so, so high up there. Uh, as far as why Kennesaw State might not go over their win total, the Owls really struggled last year. They won only three games. All of those were against Division II opponents, and they're going to face a significant challenge transitioning to FBS competition, right? Number two, they lost their starting quarterback, Jonathan Murphy. Uh, they're going to be relying on new, less experienced players in key positions, which really could hamper their offensive consistency. Uh, number three, despite their strong returning production, the team is relatively inexperienced at the FBS level, and the overall roster strength ranks them at the bottom of the Conference USA, which indicates a pretty tough road this year. Uh, their rating, I've got them at number 134, dead last in the country. Uh, conference rating, of course, is number 10. That's dead last. Projected wins, though? I've actually got them at 3.14, uh, which is just over. I've got, them, uh, I've got them a favorite in two games, which less than a point against FIU, and then, of course, against UT Martin. Uh, but I've got them in five toss-up games. So at the end of the year, at UTEP, Sam Houston, FIU, and at Louisiana Tech, those could kind of go any which way. But it all kind of depends on what the beginning of the year looks like and whether or not they just kind of get their brains beat in. So we'll, we'll see what Kennesaw State looks like. We move on to the Liberty Flames, of course, last year's conference title winner and, uh, and made it to the Fiesta Bowl. Didn't look great in the Fiesta Bowl, but they made it there. Current win total sits at 10.5. That is the same as the opener. Of course, odds are minus 130 to go over. That's 56.52% probability and plus 100 to go under, which is 50%. Conference odds, minus 200. That is 66.67% implied probability think it probably should be a fair bit higher. A fair bit higher. Uh, now, why Liberty might go over their win total? Number one, 
course, with head coach Jamie Chadwell's proven track record, and you've got the uh, the dynamic duo, right? Quarterback Caden Salter, running back Quentin Cooley. Uh, Liberty boasts one of the best offensive units in the G5. Now, number two, the Flames are favored in all 12 of their games this season, at least according to me. Eh, no, I take that back. They're favored in 11 games. So I'm just realizing that App State, I've got them as a, about a half a point underdog there. Regardless, they, they're favored by more than one touchdown in every game other than App State. That includes key matchups against Jacksonville State and Western Kentucky at home. An undefeated regular season is not out of the realm of possibilities. Uh, I would be careful with that East Carolina game. Uh, Saturday, September 21st, before you go to App State, just tossing that out there. Uh, Number three, Liberty's got the highest roster strength in Conference USA. Their defense, of course, bolstered by, you know, power conference transfers, should be improved enough to support the high-powered offense as well. Uh, Now, as for why they might go under the total, the defense has notable gaps, uh, really in the secondary for sure, where they lost key players like Preston Hodge, Kobe Singleton. Uh, That could make them pretty vulnerable against some stronger offensive teams, save, for example, Western Kentucky. Uh, Now, number two, the offensive line is undergoing pretty significant changes. You get the loss of two outstanding guards uh, and their left tackle transferred to Vanderbilt. That might disrupt their offensive rhythm. I kind of trust Jamie Chadwell to be able to figure that out, but obviously this is not something that's ideal. In the number three, Liberty schedule, while it's not daunting, you got challenging road games against App State, uh, and you know there's a potential for regression after the 13-1 season. It's, it's just difficult to do that year over year, right? So... But other than that, there's nothing on paper that would really tell you that this team should go under the 10.5, which is pretty wild. Uh, Their rating is number 52 nationally. Uh, Conference rating is number one, of course. Projected wins, I've got them at 10.21, which is slightly under. I've got them a projected favorite in 11 games. I've only got one toss-up game. Like They are projected by... I've got them projected by more than eight points favored in every single game except for the App State game. That is pretty intense, pretty intense. So Jamie Chadwell should have another good year on the horizon for the Liberty Flames here. Ooh, the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Uh, Louisiana Tech's current win total is five. That is up from the opener of four and a half, which I was a little surprised about with the movement there. Uh, But they've got odds of minus 105 to go over. That's 51.22% probability. And minus 125 to go under. That is 55.56%. Conference odds, plus 2,500. That is 3.85% implied chance uh, to win the conference. Now, as far as why Louisiana Tech might go over their win total, you got key offensive players like running back Marquise Crosby that are returning from injury and a promising skill core that's bolstered by, of course, transfers. Uh, The Bulldogs, they've got the potential to rejuvenate the offensive attack, uh, even without Hank Bachmeyer uh, at quarterback, which, I mean, if you watch this team at all, you know what was up with, uh, with the quarterback room last year. Uh, and the number two, the defensive unit, they're inexperienced, but they include solid returning linemen, uh, McCole Clark, and, of course, Zion Nason, and the addition of impactful transfers like linebacker C.J. Harris and Sifa Leota. Those guys should help strengthen the defense. And number three, of course, uh, head coach Sonny Cumbie. He's improved the team's depth significantly from last year. Uh, the scholarship players have been increased, uh, and, excuse me, increased drastically. Uh, that could lead to better overall performance. Uh, and maybe some more competitive games. Like, maybe so. Now, as far as why they might go under, I mean, there's several reasons for that. Uh, the team is still dealing with a lack of consistency at quarterback. You got Jack Turner, Evan Bullock, and Ty Keyes all vying for the starting position. That could lead to some ongoing instability in the offense if they don't make a choice right off the bat or if somebody doesn't separate themselves. We still got fall camp to do that, though. Uh, Louisiana Tech's defense, this is number two, uh, despite some improvements, remains a major concern as they ranked poorly last season and lost their top four tacklers. Uh, It puts significant pressure on unproven players and new transfers. And then number three, the Bulldogs have, I mean, they have really struggled to win close games. They went one and seven in one possession games over the last two years. Penalties, turnovers, all that kind of stuff could continue to cost them uh, any of these games. I mean, it's just, it's absurd what they've, uh, what they've done really. Uh, their national rating, I've got at number 121. Their conference rating is number five. Projected wins? Y'all may not believe this. I've got them at 5.24, which is slightly over the win total here. I've got them a projected favorite in six games, and I've got them in eight toss-up games. 
Now, if they have eight one-score games, how many of those are they going to win if they went one and seven in their previous eight one-score games? So I'm very curious what Sonny Cumbie's going to be up to. If they can't find a way to make a bowl game this year, uh, that might be all she wrote for him in, uh, in Ruston. Tickets to everything are expensive these days. And I know you're like me. You want to catch a big game or a concert, maybe even tickets to a show. Why not save some money every time you buy tickets? Visit TicketSmarter.com or use the Ticket Smarter mobile app and use the promo code WCE10, that's WCE10, to save $10 on any order of $100 or more, or use WCE20, that's WCE20, to save $20 on an order of $300 or more. It's not a one-time sign-up bonus or anything. Seriously, every time you buy tickets, you can save money on already great deals. So do yourself a favor. Think smarter with Ticket Smarter. Middle Tennessee, the Blue Raiders, their current win total is five. That is up from the uh, the four and a half opener. Odds of minus 105 to go over. That's 51.22% probability. And minus 125 to go under. That is 55.56%. So slight favorite to the under here. Conference odds, plus 2,500 to win the, uh, the title with an implied probability of 3.85%. Now, as far as why Middle Tennessee might go over their win total, Derek Mason, I think, was a pretty good hire. He inherits a solid offensive core that includes the uh, the dual threat quarterback, of course, uh, Nicholas Variado. I hope I said that right. And standout slot receiver Holden Willis. Uh, that could lead to an explosive offense under veteran coordinator Bodie Reeder. I love these names uh, with MTSU. I mean, just love them. Uh, number two, the addition of quality transfers like Omari Kelly from Auburn, they could bolster the receiving core, you know, provides more weapons, improves the overall offense potentially. Uh, number three, despite the tough non-conference schedule, back half of the season features a lot more winnable games. Uh, you do have Liberty back there, but, I mean, you look at this, uh, middle of the year, you get Louisiana Tech on the road, you get Kennesaw State, then you've got Jacksonville State on the road, probably not going to win that one. Um, but at UTEP, at Liberty at home, and then you got New Mexico State and FIU to close the year, that's that's pretty good. So that, that could allow the Blue Raiders to gain some momentum towards the end of the year and, and potentially finish strong. Now, as far as why they might go under their total, the team has some significant challenges. You got a new head coach, you got new coordinators, you got a roster lacking in returning production, particularly on the offensive line and the defensive front. That ain't great. Now, number two, the defense, which has been inconsistent and ranked poorly in uh, in recent years, they lost a bunch of key players to the transfer portal. It's going to be tough for Mason to come in and just immediately turn things around with his D. Uh, and then number three. A tough start to the season. Of course, you got four of the first five games where you're underdogs. Uh, yeah, you should win. You should win against Tennessee Tech, but then you got Ole Miss, Western Kentucky, Duke, and Memphis. A strong chance you end up one and four after the first five games. So if you build that early hole or dig that early hole, it's going to be tough to be able to dig out of that and uh, and find a way to come out with a winning record on the other side. Uh, the the rating is one fourteen nationally. Conference rating is number four, projected wins at 5.12, so I actually got them slightly over. I don't know how I feel about that, really. Um, and if you see on here, if you just go by, you know, 0.5 wins per toss-up game, I've got them at four and a half wins on here. But as far as, like, win projections, uh, win probability for each game, I've got them at 5.12. So I've got them a, a favorite in four games. i got them a toss-up in seven games. We'll see what Derek Mason's got up his sleeve. Uh, I don't feel great about uh, going over, but, I mean, you never know. You never know. They do have some talent on the offensive side of the football. Next up, last year's darlings, of course, the New Mexico State Aggies. No more Jerry Kill around for this bunch, so I'm not going to be as into them as I have been. Uh, Diego Pavia is gone as well, but we'll we'll talk about all that. Current win total sits at 4.5, odds of plus 130 to go over. Uh, that is 43.48% implied probability, and minus 160 to go under. So that is the yeah, pretty significant favorite there is to go under 61.54% probability on that. Conference odds to win the title, plus 5,000. That's an implied probability of 1.96%. Now, as far as why they might go over the win total, despite the massive roster turnover, the offensive line does remain intact. you got all five starters returning. That's a pretty strong foundation for both the run and the pass games. 
Number two, you bring in, you know, some playmakers like running back Monty Watkins, who averaged nearly 10 yards per carry. And then, of course, Buffalo transfer Mike Washington. That could create a, a pretty effective ground attack. Number three, Tony Sanchez, who is the new head coach. He's a New Mexico State alum. He brings valuable experience and a pretty deep connection to the program, potentially fostering a maybe a resilient team. Like they can eke out some wins, maybe in a balanced conference USA. Maybe. Now, as far as why they might go under uh, their win total, number one, they face significant challenges with nearly the entire starting lineup from last year's successful season having transferred out. Uh, that includes key positions. I've mentioned Diego Pavia and, uh, and a bunch of top school players. Uh, most of those have gone over to Vanderbilt with Jerry Kill, who is an analyst over there now, but regardless. Uh, number two, the defensive side has been gutted. They tell us 15 of their top 18 tacklers, which is going to be difficult to replace in just one offseason, especially with a new coaching staff that's trying to implement their own system. And then number three, the uncertainty at the quarterback position. You got no clear leader emerging from the spring, uh, coupled with the lack of returning production that suggests that the offense is probably going to struggle to replicate last year's pretty explosive performance. Uh, their rating, I've got them at number 125. Uh, their conference rating is number eight. As far as projected wins, I've got them at 5.01. That is slightly over. Now, this is using some priors from last year, so we'll see. Um, it's tough to use priors when these rosters change so much, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, I've got them as a projected favorite in four games. Uh, I've got them in seven toss-up games. Uh, there's winnable games on the schedule, but I I don't know what to make of this team. I did not think that the coach did a very good job in his last head coaching stint at New Mexico. Um, or excuse me, at UNLV. So we'll we'll see uh, what happens here, but I'm... I'm not exactly bullish on New Mexico State. We've got a few more to go here. Sam Houston State is next up. Current win total, four and a half. Remember, they moved over from FCS to FBS last year. Uh, it started out the year, didn't look great, but they were competitive as hell. And by God, towards the end of the year, they actually started getting some wins. There's a lot of people that I trust that are really bullish on this team. So current win total, four and a half. That's the same as the opener. Odds of minus 140. To go over, that is 58.33%, so a pretty heavy favorite to go over. It's plus 110 to go under, that's 47.62% probability. Conference odds to win the title, plus 2,000. That's implied probability of 4.76%. That thing has, has moved significantly. I feel good about it. Now, as far as why they might go over their win total, you got top 20 returning production. You got key offensive weapons, of course, uh, receivers Noah Smith, Simeon Evans, and uh, you got a healthy Ife Adei. I hope I said that right. Um, they should have significant improvement on offense, especially you got a solid offensive line returning intact. That's a that's a big deal. Uh, number two, Central Michigan transfer quarterback Jace Bauer brings in some experience, some versatility to that offense that really struggled last year. Uh, he might be the spark that they need to maybe turn some of those close losses that they had last year into wins like they started doing at the end of last season. And then number three, KC Keeler, he's got a proven track record. The team's strong finish last year. They went through their last four games. They've got some resilience. they got some momentum to maybe exceed some expectations this year. Now, as far as why that might go under, number one, despite the high returning production, the defense is replacing most of its starters, which could lead to you know, some struggles in maintaining consistency and effectiveness on that side of the ball. And number two, the Bearcats, of course, lost crucial games by narrow margins last season. And really, unless they significantly improve their execution in these close games, they might continue to lose some of those close games. And so you never know with these. Turnovers are very, very important. Number three, the new quarterback, as I mentioned, Bauer, uh, he's experienced, but you're bringing him into a brand new system. He's got to be able to gel with his teammates. You got to get the chemistry right. That, that might take some time. Could result in some early season growing pains. You got Rice and UCF right off the bat. You got Hawaii at home, who, like, I've got that as a toss up, but Hawaii might be pretty good this year. Uh, and then you move into conference play New Mexico State at home, Texas State on the road. That is a, a, a non conference. Actually, I think that's a neutral site. Interesting. So, regardless, uh, a lot going on there. Their national rating, I've got it 122. Conference rating, I've got it number six. Uh, projected wins, I've got them at 4.31, which is slightly under. Uh, and as you see on the screen, I've actually got them at three and a half wins. I don't, I don't have a single game 
that is a gimme on the schedule. Not one, but there are some pretty significant losses on here. Eh, I, I, I know there's a lot of people that are bullish. I don't know. I don't know. I've got them a favorite in three games. I've got them a toss-up in seven games. Uh, this one's going to be fun to watch to see exactly what chemistry and, and all that can mean because we know Casey Keeler is a phenomenal head coach. I mean, this team just won an FCS National Championship in the, the spring 2020 season and then looked pretty good that fall as well. So I, we'll see. We'll see what this team does. The UTEP Miners. This is a team I like talking about. I love their stadium down there. And I am a, uh, I'm a fan of their new head coach. Current win total is at four, which is down from the four and a half opener. I was kind of surprised by that because I actually kind of like this bunch. But regardless, uh, odds of minus 120 to go over. Uh, that's 54.55% implied probability. And minus 110 to go under. That's implied probability of 52.38%. Conference odds to win the title, plus 6,000 of course, with an implied probability of 1.64%. Now, why UTEP might go over their win total? Number one, Scotty Walden. Dynamic coaching style. He's very successful. Uh, he's got a proven track record at Austin P. Uh, remember, this is the coach that was the interim coach at Southern Miss and quit in the middle of the year during the COVID season and went on to Austin P. But he was highly successful there. Highly successful. He's, he's going to bring some energy. He's going to bring a, a proven offensive scheme that might translate into immediate improvement for the Miners. Now, number two, you got the influx of 12 Austin P transfers. You got standout players like 1,400-yard rusher Javon Jackson. You got a bunch of key receivers. This could quickly bolster that UTEP offense. It might give them a spark here. We'll see. Now, number three, the return of standout defensive players like, of course, the outside linebacker, Maurice Westmoreland. Uh, you get the addition of some experienced transfers. Suggests the defense can maintain competitiveness while the offense finds its footing uh, early in the season. Now, as far as why UTEP might not go over their win total, why they might go under, the Miners are going to face... Uh, they Look, it's significant roster, roster turnover, right? You got the top three rushers, top four pass catchers, and, uh, and the top six linemen are all gone. Now, that's that's some big-time challenges. Um, how are you going to create, a, you know, cohesion? How are you going to really be effective with all these new pieces? But we've seen it done before. So, we shall see. Number two, uh, despite bringing in a high number of transfers, the overall lack of FBS experience among these new recruits could lead to a pretty tough adjustment period especially in Conference USA, who is highly competitive. you got a lot of one-score games. Now, if you don't really know what you're doing, it, a fumble here, a penalty there, that kind of stuff can, can really cost you ball games. Uh, number three, the offensive line, of course, featuring many new starters. Uh, it might struggle to protect the quarterback. It might not be able to establish a consistent running game. It might hinder the effectiveness of, uh, of Walden's offensive system uh, quite a bit in year one. Now, their national rating, I've got at number 123. The conference rating is number 7. Projected wins here, I've got them at 4.51, which is slightly over that 4. I've got them a projected favorite in 5 games, and I've got them in 7 toss-up games. Now, you see on here, you do a half game for, or a half win for toss-up games, and I've got it at 4.5 here. But that's if they win, you know, half of those toss-up games. Like, I... This was going to be fun to watch. I mean, we saw Texas State do this kind of thing with G.J. Kinney last year. Uh, I'm curious if he'll be able to kind of replicate that with those Austin P guys because I know he had some good players. Uh, a couple of years ago, they really they went to Tuscaloosa and really fought to the nail against Alabama. Nick Saban was pretty impressed with, uh, with what he was doing out there. So I'm, I'm curious to see what UTEP looks like. And finally, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers WKU Current win total, 7.5. That is the same as the opener. Odds minus 115 to go over. That's 53.49%. And minus 115 to go under. Same probability there. Conference odds, plus 450 to win the Conference USA title. Uh, that's an implied probability of 18.18%. Now, as far as why WKU might go over their win total, number one, despite losing key players like Austin Reed and Malachi Corley, the addition of an experienced quarterback like TJ Finley I mean, he, he threw for almost 3,500 yards at Texas State. That should keep the offensive uh, production 
yeah, pretty good, I would think. They should keep them dynamic as well on offense. Uh, the kid can sling it. Number two, the offensive line is solid. You got three returning starters. You got talented transfers like Blake Austin coming in. Uh, that's going to provide some stability and protection for the passing game. And then number three, the defense. Yeah, yeah, you need to replace several key players. Um, but it's bolstered its ranks, of course, with impactful transfers from SEC schools, which could improve the overall performance and help the Hilltoppers remain competitive in most of their games. Now, as far as why they might go under their win total, you got the loss of explosive playmakers. I brought them up, Reed and Corley. I mean, those guys were an outstanding duo. Uh, you could have inconsistencies in the offense, especially if the new starters can't replicate their production. Number two, the defense, of course, has struggled in the past. They, uh, they face significant turnover, might need time to gel, potentially leading to vulnerabilities early in the season. Number three, the schedule includes tough non-conference games against Alabama and Boston College, as well as, of course, a bunch of these CUSA matchups that are pretty challenging in their own right uh, that could hinder their ability to surpass last year's win total. I've got their rating at number 89 in the country. Conference rating is number three. Projected wins, I've got them at 6.93, which is just under seven. Uh, win total of seven and a half. That seven would not get them there. Uh, I've got them a projected favorite in nine games, and I've got six toss-up games. But when you look at this thing, I got four games that that I feel should be wins. After that, you know, Boston College I've got as a toss-up. But do you expect them to beat Boston College? I I don't think so. Uh, Toledo, you got them at home. I got them a short favorite there. You got to go on the road to Middle Tennessee early. And this uh, there's just some tricky spots for Western Kentucky, but uh. But I like what Helton and the bunch are doing. I uh, We'll see how long he sticks around. I think he's wanted to get out for a little while. If he's got an opportunity, uh, he he might try it. But then again, he might be a lifer there. Who am I to say? But I, I think he's he's done good things there. I expect him to continue to do good things. All right, as far as the conference title game goes, I'm like everyone else, right? I think Liberty's going to win this thing, but... I am going to take Rich Rodriguez and the Jacksonville State Gamecocks to get to the title game and to challenge for it. Now, I know Jack State's got to travel to Western Kentucky in the in the last game of the year, but I think they could have second place wrapped up by then. Liberty at minus 200 to win the conference. I mean, they're going to be heavier favorites than that when we get to the championship weekend, regardless of who they're playing. So I'd, I'd go ahead and lay it. Like, that's just personal preference. But, uh, but yeah, minus 200, that, that seems like a discount at this point it was minus 135 i believe at opening it's out to minus 200 i think that thing could be minus 300 before week one kicks off we shall see all right let's go on and get out of here uh like the video subscribe to the channel of course the podcast as well there's going to be additional stuff over there and of course if you want to keep the, the channel growing you can become a member at bettingcfb.com for winning cures everything god bless college football and we will see you on the next one Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.